So um, just to expose you to mapping, um, what I'm going to do is show you some examples of uh, sustainability issue mapping. Um, and the basis of this is to understand the overall context in which design operates because design does not exist in a vacuum. So these context maps demonstrate how design is part of business and that business is part of the world and all three are linked. For designers to understand their particular role, it's important that they make a connection between creating design work and creating more sustainable businesses, which in turn create a more sustainable world. Within the context, within those contexts, there are four basic agendas, financial, social, environmental, and personal. Sustainable design is about balancing all four of those agendas. It isn't easy because they are in constant conflict with one another and are being driven by many different issues from reducing pollution to making profit. By mapping the issues against the four agendas, uh, four agenda axes, we can show which are most important to each project and which ones might be missing. Adding more sustainability being more sustainable is about aiming for balance across the four agendas. The overall function of sustainability issue mapping is that it reveals imbalances. But the result can be that, Disney, that designers clearly see what issues they need to focus on in order to make their particular design work more sustainable. So when we discuss our work on sustainable design, we're, we're often asked, could you call this ethical design? The answer is yes. And we could also frame the subjects as moral, responsible, or possibly even good design. Sustainable design is often thought to be only about the environment, but it's a much wider field than that. It's about balancing environmental and social responsibilities against financial pressures and personal desires. Balancing everything is a, in a more informed and responsible way for a better quality of life. Ultimately, these issues shouldn't require any separate labeling. Instead, they should be generally accepted as part of normal design. But for a number of reasons, it's a long way from that. Okay, so let's deal with the global context. Okay, we usually begin, we're, we're gonna begin with a map of global issues plotted against the four agendas. They are all global concerns and the sorts of things that people talk about on the evening news or on social media. The issues we use and the positions um, they have are just some examples, okay? There could be many more or many less. People love to add their own and move them around according to their particular view, okay? The important thing is that individuals recognize that by using the mapping method with its basic set of elements, you can produce your own unique maps. However, Although everyone has opinions on these issues, ultimately they are about national and international interests and are the responsibility of policymakers. The term might be used above our pay grade. Certainly none of these issues are the responsibility of designers. At this scale, the issue of design isn't even part of a feature. Some designers don't like that aspect of this mapping method, um, but it is realistic. Designers need to be aware of the issues within this context. It helps them create design solutions that respond to global issues. But policymakers often don't hand these issues directly to designers for ideas. Instead, it is business that is usually under pressure to deliver those solutions. So this is an example of a global context map. Issues are, are grouped according to the four agendas on each of the four axes. 
financial, social, personal, and environmental, with darker squares um, being the most um, important issues. So we come down into scale to the business context. So we're zooming in on business. And it's, it's becoming um, an entire context in its own right at this point. The map shown, again, is only an example. And um, in this context, issues relate to the management of organizations and are the responsibility of business managers. At this scale, design actually finally becomes visible, but it is just one of a plethora of other issues. However, it does have the potential to occupy an important central position. Here again, some designers have real problems. Um, seeing their whole world as a small part of a bigger business is difficult for some people to deal with. An important feature of this, of this particular example is that it shows an imbalance weighted, not surprisingly, towards money or financial the more designers understand business issues, the better they can respond to the increasing demands of new business strategies. So this is an example of a business context map. The next level as we zoom in is the design context. Using examples Using the examples, we can show the issues that are the responsibility of actual designers. They are the sorts of things that a designer can actually make a decision about and then change their design, a form of direct action. Not all the issues are appropriate to every piece of design work. Ideally, individual designers would create their own issue maps for each design project. In fact, members of design teams might actually create different maps even if they're working on the same design project. Most designers recognize that some issues straight away but aren't used to seeing them all. This can be the first time that many have faced the responsibility of such a complex project. Designers need to be familiar with all the issues shown and possibly more in order to be balanced across all of the agendas. If they can be balanced, they will be producing more sustainable design work. So once we've got to this point of getting down to the issues that are the responsibility of the designers, the next stage is to start looking at each individual issue in more detail. So this is an example of a design context map. Now we're moving into each of the individual radii from that particular axis, from that particular um, grid. The financial agenda, creating financially viable work, focuses on the design issues that affect the costs of distribution and production. The parameters are most likely to be set by clients, but designers may be able to suggest alternative approaches if they are aware of the client's claims have a good relationship with the client, and are involved in the briefing process early enough. Ultimately, this agenda is driven by an increasingly competitive market. But if designers focus too much on cost cutting or profit making, the danger is that the results will be bland or boring design. The social side of the agenda. The overall question posed by this agenda is whether the finished design benefits society as a whole. Graphic designers don't usually dictate content, but they can decide whether they work for clients who are communicating something good for society. Where should designers draw the line and why? These decisions are determined by the individual designer's sense of what is right or wrong. And that is within the cultural and political context of that particular designer or that particular target market. For those who want it, work for good causes is there, but that often means working at very tight budgets with extremely creatively restrictive briefs. 
So the final two agendas, we have the personal agenda, which is creating personable, personally desirable design work. It's about fulfilling your dreams and desires um, and, or the individual consumer's dreams and desires. Graphic designers are often asked to address the latest trends or use the latest technology. Pressure comes from end users and their peers driven by ever-changing fashions in consumer culture. These issues are also dictated by the form and function of the design work. An instruction manual for a mobile phone will be different from its marketing campaign or even its on-screen interface. But designers bring their own personal preferences and often find it hard to objectively design for others, which is the purpose behind user experience and user interface. So that we design for the end user, not how we would necessarily use the product. The last agenda is the environmental agenda. Environmentally responsible design is about considering the natural resources depleted in the production process. These issues are relatively new, but their acceptability is growing, driven by an increasing awareness of our impact on the planet. Designers are questioning the necessity of some of what they produce. So in graphic design, there are concerns about printing processes, paper production, and waste. By asking questions of stock suppliers and printers, designs can make a real difference. But the authority to specify paper or printers may not always lie with the designer. However, clients are under increasing pressure to meet environmental standards, so opportunities to discuss these issues are growing. It is no longer the case that awareness of environmental concerns need result in predictably eco-friendly solutions. So this was an overview of um, narrowing it down from the, the uh, macro to the micro in sustainability and um, grids, okay, um, or um, context maps, as you will. Um, and they would even get more specific um, if we continued down through the process. So um, I hope you enjoyed that and have a great day.